you know what? I should just say, this show was fucking abysmal. This show was a piece of shit. End of review. But you know what? I'm not going to do that for you guys. So, but, hey everyone, this is Michael again. Welcome to the Super Showdown review, or Super Shitdown review. And this show was from the Mohammed Abdu Arena in Riyadh, uh, Saudi Arabia. And you know, with WWE and these glorified Saudi Arabia house shows, these shows are fucking terrible. This show, like I said, was fucking abysmal, god awful, piece of shit. Garbage inducing glorified house show from Saudi Arabia. You know what? I don't even know what I watched during this pay per view. Um, these, these matches, some of these matches were fucking awful and boring. We started off with the To Wake Mountain Trophy gauntlet match, and then we ended it with the death of the of the fiend Bray Wyatt, and we could all thank Bill Goldberg for that. So let's take a moment. Let's have a moment of silence for Bill Goldberg destroying what, in my opinion, is one of the best uh, characters that WWE has seen in possibly over a decade, and that is the fiend Bray Wyatt. So let's have a moment of silence for the fiend Bray Wyatt. Okay, so let's get on with this god awful uh, piece of shit show. Not going to give a full in depth review of this because this show does not deserve a full in-depth review. I put out a poll earlier today, uh, knowing if you guys wanted me to do a full in-depth review of this show, and uh, one vote, only got one vote, they said, uh, that voted no. They don't want to see a full in-depth review of this show. And you know what? Whoever said no, I am glad you voted for no. I'm glad you voted for that, because after watching this show, I didn't even want to do a full in-depth review of this glorified piece of shit show. So let's get on with this review. So we had the match that was on the kickoff show, the OC versus the Viking Raiders. Very boring match. Very boring. Carl Anderson, Luke Gallows, find uh, the Viking Raiders. You end up winning the match, and uh, the OC uh, won with the Magic uh, Killer on, I guess, I think it was Ivar. So the OC end up winning in an overall boring match. So that was that was the only match that was on the uh, the kickoff show, that was on the pre-show. And then we move on to the uh, regular uh, matches uh, on the card. So the show ended up kicking off with the Tawake Mountain Trophy Gauntlet match. Our truth was uh, the first one. Uh, to come out uh, to start off this uh, gauntlet match for the, for the Tawake Trophy, Mountain Trophy. So our truth came out, and he ended up facing uh, Bobby Lashley. So, so it was our truth versus Bobby Lashley uh, here, and our truth ended up eliminating uh, Bobby Lashley. And because of that, what what happened? Uh, Lashley 
uh, then end up attacking uh, our truth. And Lashley ends up driving uh, our truth into the ring post. And he also uh, drove our truth into the, uh, the ring steps. So then we see Lashley then tosses uh, truth back into the ring. And Lashley then delivers a spear to our truth. And that was basically that was basically what happened. So, yeah, so the referees ended up having to uh, back Lashley off uh, from uh, our truth. So, and that was pretty much you know basically uh, that. So then our truth then faced off against uh, Andrade, Andrade San Almas. And of course, uh, Andrade uh, returned uh, after, you know, he was uh, suspended uh, for 30 days due to WWE's uh, wellness policy. So it was R-Truth and Andrade there. R-Truth then ended up eliminating Andrade, which, you know, I have no problem with R-Truth. He's entertaining, but still, R-Truth end up eliminating Andrade, really? So then, uh, after Andrade uh, got eliminated from uh, our truth Eric Rowan came out. So Eric Rowan and our truth uh, were fighting, and our truth was uh, at one point uh, bleeding uh, from his face. And so, stupidly, uh, Eric Rowan, he ended up uh, taking uh, the uh, ring steps and he rams uh, the ring steps into our truth So because of that, Rowan ended up getting eliminated, which was fucking stupid on his part. So he basically comes out, fights off our truth, and gets himself eliminated. Just like that. Idiot. Idiot move that, that he did. So then Rowan ends up delivering the claw slam to our truth And that was basically, you know, that. That was basically what happened. So then, after that, we had... AJ Styles come out. So now our truth was uh, facing uh, AJ Styles. And, you know, pretty much, basically, it was Styles, uh, you know, taking control of the gauntlet match now, working on our truth So AJ Styles uh, eliminated our truth because he ended up locking the calf crusher. Uh, on uh, our truth so truth ended up uh, tapping out so truth gets eliminated our truth gets eliminated and then AJ Styles was in the ring and Rey Mysterio's music ended up in so Rey Mysterio was going to be the next uh, in this gauntlet match to uh, face Styles but unfortunately Rey Mysterio uh, didn't uh, come out and so they played his music again and to see if, you know, he was going to come out. Didn't come out uh, then. And so Styles was, you know, like had like a, uh, you know, like a smirk on his face, like he was laughing. And so we go to the back and then we find out that Mysterio uh, got beat down by Gallows and uh, Anderson uh, in the back. So then uh, Styles ends up uh, saying, you know, you know, fans were chanting for uh, The Undertaker. So Styles ends up taking the mic and he ends up saying that it doesn't look like, you know, Mysterio will be getting up from that beatdown uh, from his boys. And he ends up saying he wins by forfeit. So Styles ends up ordering the referee to declare him the winner. 
And he then goes to ringside and he orders uh, you know, Mike Rome to ring the bell and give him the trophy. So Mike Rome says that, you know, he was just informed that if Styles' opponent doesn't make it to the ring by the count of 10, Styles will be the winner. Styles would win the other uh, trophy. So Styles and uh, the crowd were uh, counting, uh, you know, with the referee. And so the camera ends up cutting backstage. And we see uh, Gallows and Anderson on the ground. So Gallows and Anderson were on the ground. And then we see, uh, then we see uh, someone, you know, there with black boots. And he steps into the screen. And the fans were popping, and it appeared to be The Undertaker. And so, you know, The Undertaker ended up uh, walking uh, out to the ring. You know, the bells start, the lights go out in the arena, and The Undertaker comes out. The Undertaker makes an appearance because there were reports saying that The Undertaker was... Uh, in Saudi Arabia, and you know the Undertaker came out. He came out to a huge pop from uh, the crowd there, which the crowd, in my opinion, uh, throughout this whole show was god awful. Like they didn't even react to you know, pretty much nothing except for like the Undertaker, and you know whenever these superstars during the show. In uh, certain matches, these crowds were, ch these people in the crowd were chanting, Oh, this is awesome. And I'm like, what is awesome? What is awesome that you're seeing in these matches? There was nothing awesome that happened in, you know, some of these matches. Except for The Undertaker. Except for the Undertaker making a surprise appearance, and the Undertaker, you know, was basically here to set up uh, the match going into WrestleMania, the Undertaker versus AJ Styles. So, as soon as the Undertaker got in the ring, Styles was throwing a fit and saying, "Oh, this is not, this is not right." So, Styles ends up putting his finger at. The Undertaker's chest. And he did that several times. Styles ends up turning back around. And The Undertaker then choke slams uh, Styles. So, because of that, Taker ended up pinning Styles. And there you go. The Undertaker ends up winning the first ever to Wake Mountain Gauntlet match. And The Undertaker wins. The trophy. But overall, this match, this match was, in my opinion, one of the worst book matches in, you know, this company. So this company in recent memory of this company. I mean, The Undertaker, The Undertaker winning the trophy, I mean... He gets no shot. All he just wins is a trophy. That was basically that. Was basically that. So the Undertaker wins the uh, Twig Trophy. So then after that we had The Miz and John Morrison versus The New Day for the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. You know, overall... It was an okay match. It wasn't, you know, a great match. I didn't love the match. But the Miz and John Morrison uh, win it. So, because uh, Morrison ends up uh, having a chair in hand. And he jabs uh, the chair into Kofi. 
and that led to uh, the Miz uh, rolling Kofi up. And the Miz and Morrison win the match. They're the new SmackDown Tag Team Champions. So, but overall, it was a very it was okay match. Didn't love it. Wasn't a great match by any means, though. Then uh, we had Byron Saxton. He ends up interviewing Seth Rollins and Buddy Murphy backstage. They end up saying that they are confident about retaining the titles over the Street Profits tonight. So that was basically that. Was basically that. And then we had Angel Garza versus Humberto Carrillo. Like, we haven't seen this match, you know, times, you know, times before. We just saw this on Raw on Monday. And so now we're getting it again. We got it again. But Angel Garza ended up winning. Nothing new here. Angel Garza wins. Moving on. Then after that, we had Byron uh, Saxton backstage with Bailey. Bailey ended up saying that, you know, tonight isn't just about making history. It's about beating Naomi and proving why, once again, that she is the best and most dominant SmackDown Women's Champion. That was what Bailey had to say. So then, after that, we had Seth Rollins and Buddy Murphy versus the Street Profits. And this match, you know, was, you know, okay. Not great. Or perfect by any means. But Seth Rollins and Buddy Murphy uh, win the match. Seth Rollins ended up delivering a curb stomp to uh, Angelo Dawkins. And that led to Buddy Murphy... Uh, pin in Angel Dawkins. So you go, Seth Rollins and Buddy Murphy win the match, retain the Raw Tag Team Championships. Now is that. And then we had Mansoor. Mansoor, you know, there WWE is using him uh, always at these uh, Saudi Arabia shows, and the guy is talented. The guy is uh, decent and uh, enjoyable in the ring. So he was facing off against Dolph Ziggler. And this was a uh, decent match. I really enjoyed this match. You know, Dolph Ziggler putting over, uh, you know, Mansoor. And the last time we saw Mansoor uh, have a match was uh, when he uh, faced uh, Cesaro. And that was a pretty uh, decent match. But uh, Mansoor uh, ended up winning the match. And uh, Dolph Ziggler was uh, out there. Uh, Robert Roode ended up accompanying uh, Dolph Ziggler to the ring. And uh, Mansoor ended up uh, taking out uh, Robert Roode. And the referee ended up uh, throwing out uh, Robert Roode. Uh, from ringside, so it was just one-on-one -on -one between uh, Mansoor and Dolph Ziggler. But Mansoor won the match, ended up hitting a moonsault to uh, Ziggler. So there you go, Mansoor ends up winning the match. Another win uh, for Mansoor in Saudi Arabia, uh, because he is from, uh, I think he is from Saudi Arabia. So post-match, Byron Saxton uh, was in the ring. He was interviewing Mansoor. Mansoor ends up uh, taking the mic. He's speaking uh, in Arabic. You know, he's speaking to uh, his people. He ends up saying that he thanks everyone and says that their voices carried him tonight. He ended up saying they picked him up and gave him hope when he had nothing left. He ended up saying last year Saudi Arabia proved to him that they were ready for their first superstar. 
And he ended up saying tonight, they proved to WWE that they are here to stay. And the fans were chanting, you know, you deserve it there. So Mansoor was speaking uh, more in uh, Arabic uh, to end the, uh, the promo. But I thought it was a pretty, uh, you know, decent, you know, promo that uh, Mansoor uh, ended up cutting. You know, the guy, like I said, the guy is talented in the ring. You know, the WWE is going to use him more now in these uh, Saudi Arabia shows. He might be the best thing about these fu about future Saudi Arabia shows and the matches that WWE ends up uh, putting him in. Whenever the next Saudi Arabia show comes about, you can definitely tell Mansoor is going to be the only uh, one that puts on a decent match in these Saudi shows. And then we get into Brock Lesnar versus Ricochet <laughs> for the WWE Championship. And you know what? I, I ain't even going to talk about this match because this match was fucking hilarious. This match only lasted two minutes. And you know what? I will post my reaction. Yes, I did uh, react to this match. And you know what? Here's the clip. I'm going to show you all the clip. This was my reaction during this match. Here you go. <laughs> and that was my reaction. <laughs> Brock Lesnar retained the championship. And what a waste of Ricochet to go to Saudi Arabia just to lose to Lesnar in two minutes tops. Oh, God. That match was fucking hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. Uh, moving on. Roman Reigns versus the clown, known as King Corbin. Steel cage match. And during this match, Michael Cole has the balls. To say, oh, Roman versus Corbin, this match is gonna be a this match is gonna be a classic. What? Michael Cole, I don't know what the fuck you were smoking. Well, Roman and Corbin is gonna be a classic. This this they've been they've been having this feud for months now. When is this feud gonna end? As a matter of fact. What are they fighting for? What are they fighting over? And by the way, this match was fucking boring. I did not give a shit about this match. And Roman ended up winning the match, of course. Ended up delivering a Superman punch to Corbin. There you go. Roman wins the match. Boring. Absolutely fucking boring. And WWE was playing this saying, oh, this is the last time that Roman and Corbin are going to, uh, you know, fight. Watch. They're going to definitely do something with Roman and Corbin at Elimination Chamber. Watch. They're going to definitely uh, do something with both of them. They're going to probably, they're going to be, they're going to possibly put them in an elimination chamber. I could definitely see WWE doing that. So, no, this ain't going to be the last, this wasn't going to be the last time we see Roman and Corbin. Watch, we'll see something with them at elimination chamber. And then we had Bailey versus Naomi, SmackDown Women's Championship. Match was very meh, in my opinion. Back and forth uh, between uh, the both of them. Bailey ended up winning the match. Uh, there was a point uh, where uh, Bailey ended up trapping uh, one of Naomi's legs in the shorts that she was wearing. 
that Naomi was wearing. And Bailey ended up using that to uh, drive Naomi face first uh, into uh, a knee and also into the canvas. Bailey went for the cover. There you go. Bailey ended up retaining the SmackDown Women's Championship. Moving on. And now we get to the main event. Oh my God. I can't believe it. I can't believe WWE did this. Main event Goldberg versus The Fiend, Bray Wyatt, for the Universal Championship. This match was absolute fucking garbage. I'm sorry about that, but I was saying this match was fucking god awful. This match started off with Goldberg coming to the ring, of course. Then the Fiend, Bray Wyatt, came out. You know, he had uh, the red lasers uh, when he was coming out. So the Fiend came, the Fiend, Bray Wyatt came out. Had his uh, you know, custom Universal Championship, which looks awesome. And also his lantern. And so, the bell rings. Goldberg ends up staring down at The Fiend. And The Fiend was in the corner. They both end up meeting in the middle of the ring. Face off. Fans were chanting Goldberg's name. I don't know why, because Goldberg... The only reason why Goldberg is here is because he loves that nice Saudi Arabian money. That's the only reason why he was competing against The Fiend and how he competes at these Saudi Arabia shows because he only wants the Saudi Arabian money. So Bray Wyatt, The Fiend, takes his jacket off. And just as you know he's taking his jacket off, Goldberg ends up delivering a spear to The Fiend. So, Bray Wyatt ends up, The Fiend ends up kicking out, and Goldberg is surprised. So, The Fiend ends up applying the Mandible Claw on Goldberg. And so Goldberg ends up backing The Fiend into the corner. Goldberg ends up delivering another spear to The Fiend, yeah, like, yeah, this sounds like a great match, right? So Goldberg ends up waiting for The Fiend to get up. And he ends up nailing The Fiend with a third spear. So uh, The Fiend, you know, starts to get back up. And then Goldberg ends up nailing another spear to uh, The Fiend. So... The Fiend uh, sits back up, applies the Mandible Claw on uh, Goldberg again. So Goldberg ends up breaking free uh, of the Mandible Claw, and he headbutts uh, the Fiend. And Goldberg then went for the Jackhammer Slam. And there you go. Goldberg ends up winning the match and is the new Universal Champion. Why? Why? You know, I don't know why WWE thought of this idea by putting the Universal title on Goldberg. And I don't know what to say. I really don't know what to say. Goldberg as the Universal Champion. I'm like, now you have two part-time champions. You have Brock Lesnar, the WWE Champion. And now you have Goldberg as the Universal Champion. Both guys are not even going to be on the shows. Goldberg will appear at WrestleMania. Do you think he'll be at Elimination Chamber? No. So, but you know what this sets up now, right? 
this sets up Goldberg versus Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. And you know what? Roman is going to be taking the Universal title off of Goldberg. Because you know why? WWE goes back to what they do. And they do it for Roman. That's what this all is. And you know what? It's going to be stupid if Bray Wyatt moves away, doesn't even give a shit anymore about the Universal Championship, and jumps right into maybe having a few with maybe having a few with John Cena. Maybe we'll get John Cena versus the Fiend at WrestleMania. That would be stupid if WWE decides to go that route. You know what? WWE they put all this into the Fiend. They build up the Fiend, and you know all that they did uh, with the Fiend. They just destroyed. Uh, they just destroyed it all tonight at Super Showdown. The Fiend is dead. After this, I don't see Bray Wyatt recuperating after this loss. And, you know, this is something that Bray Wyatt thought of. You know that. You know, he wanted to create this character. He had a vision of what this character uh, was going to be. And all this time and all of, you know, Bray Wyatt, you know, possibly not getting sleep and thinking about how he's going to, you know, create this character and, you know, hoping to bring it to, you know, WWE TV, you know, before The Fiend got on TV, before The Fiend was introduced on TV. You know, everything that Bray Wyatt was thinking of and created in his head and, you know, all the designs uh, for The Fiend that they did, all that is now destroyed because WWE literally took everything they did with The Fiend and they just destroyed it all today, all tonight at Super Showdown. Like I said, The Fiend is dead thanks to WWE's Bad creative. This killed this killed my liking for the fiend. And you know what? We could all thank Goldberg for that. We could all thank Goldberg. <sighs> WWE, they had they had something with the fiend. This the fiend is probably the best thing that WWE, uh, the best character that WWE has seen in a decade, possibly a decade. And the character, the Fiend character, Bray Wyatt, his merchandise was selling like hotcakes. They were the number one, uh, he was the number one bestseller on WWE Shop. Everybody was buying the masks, everybody was buying the shirts, everything. The Firefly Funhouse puppets. Bray Wyatt was the hottest seller on WWE Shop. And now, after what we saw uh, at Super Showdown, do you all think that you're all going to be uh, getting, you know, the Firefly Funhouse stuff and Bray Wyatt stuff after what we've seen uh, tonight at Super Showdown? I highly doubt it. I highly doubt it now. Character, Fiend character is fucking dead. And there's no way of uh, Bray Wyatt recuperating after this, after this loss. Now watch, Goldberg is going to be on, probably going to be on SmackDown tomorrow. And I bet you that whole crowd in Boston is going to boo the hell out of Goldberg. And you know what? I forgot to mention this. We're possibly going to be seeing Goldberg and Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. I know right now. That at WrestleMania, that crowd is going to be shitting all over that match. Watch. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. And I'm going to be laughing. Now because of this, you know, WrestleMania is you know, ruined now. There you go. We're going to see. We're going to be seeing Roman get, you know, another 
Another win with the Universal title. God awful. God awful. No, I don't even want to talk about this show anymore. This show was abysmal. It was a piece of shit. Garbage. You know what? Like I said, don't even want to talk about this show anymore. So anyways, that's it for my review of Super Showdown, Super Shitdown, if you, want, if you all want to call that. Thank you all for watching. Be sure to give the video a thumbs up, comment, subscribe. And until the next video, which you know, will possibly be uh, the SmackDown review or AEW Revolution, uh, who knows uh, what I'll do. Maybe a, Smack, maybe a SmackDown review or the AEW Rev Revolution uh, review. Uh, God know because I'm going to be busy all uh, this weekend. So, you know, hopefully get around to both of them. If not, you know, there will be you know, something else. You know, it will be the, uh, the Monday Night Raw vlog because I'm attending Monday Night Raw on Monday. So, but until then, I'll see you all later.